Good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle Stevens, and I'm the Communications Director at the Department of Inclusive Economic Growth, and I will be your moderator for today. I'd like to outline a few things before we begin. First, Labby Katsoulis, Minister of Eco Inclusive Economic Growth and Minister Responsible for Tourism, will read a statement and go through the presentation. We will conclude with a one-minute video and then take questions from media as time allows. The format will be one question and one follow-up. If there are additional questions after the event, please reach out to myself or Gary Andrea. I will now turn it over to Minister Katsoulis to begin. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning, everyone. Great to have everyone here today. COVID-19 has been challenging for all Nova Scotians and businesses. The tourism and accommodations industry has been one of the hardest hit sectors. A strong tourism season will be, important, will be an important part of the province's economic recovery. As we embark on our reopening, we are working with industry to ensure success and to welcome travellers from across Nova Scotia. And as well, we are welcoming travellers from Atlantic Canada and the entire country. And this is why I am pleased to announce more than $18 million in support for the tourism and accommodations sector today. We have been meeting with Tourism Nova Scotia and the Tourism Industry Association of Nova Scotia and with many members of the sector throughout the pandemic. This announcement is shaped by what we discussed together and I want to thank them all for their participation and feedback. Nova Scotia needs to remain competitive with the rest of the country as we begin opening our borders. The Tourism Accommodations Restart Customer Attraction Program will help registered operators attract overnight stays and bring tourism dollars to businesses across the province. Eligible accommodations will receive a $1,000 grant per room up to 10 rooms and $500 per room at 11 rooms and on. We estimate that more than 1,000 operators will be eligible to use the grant and the grant can be used for advertising, creating packages and incentives and enhancing amenities. Individual operators know what works best for their business so this program gives them the flexibility to design their own compelling offers and incentives. We are encouraging them to be creative and work with businesses within their communities. Operators can also access Tourism Nova Scotia tools and insights to help design their activities. We encourage operators to promote their businesses and packages on novascotia.com. All Tourism Nova Scotia marketing activities direct travelers to this website, which last year had more than 4 million unique visitors. In the tourism industry, many operators were impacted by public health restrictions. This is why we are also introducing the Restart Grant for small tourism operators. This $2 million program is for tourism-related businesses that were affected by COVID-19 restrictions but were not eligible for recent programs. This program provides a one-time grant of up to $5,000 for smaller tourism businesses such as tour operators, businesses providing scenic and sightseeing transportation, outdoor adventure operators, outfitters, nature parks, amusement or theme parks, zoos and gardens, RV parks, campgrounds and travel agencies. This grant can be used for advertising or other restart expenses such as PPE and cleaning supply. We anticipate that approximately 400 businesses will apply and receive this grant. These two programs will be administered by Tourism Nova Scotia and applications will be open on June 23rd. Last summer, many Nova Scotians took the opportunity to rediscover Nova Scotia and travel. Support from Nova Scotians and Atlantic Canadians improved conditions in many areas. We want people to continue traveling around the province and exploring our communities. And this is why we'll be working with community organizers and the Nova Scotia Business and Labour Economic Coalition to support a number of public events with attractions across the province with $2 million of funding. This funding will support 
craft markets featuring local artists on the waterfront, mini concerts, diverse cultural attractions, and open street events. We want everyone in our province to take advantage of the province's many museums during their travels. And we're making admission free for all visitors to the 28 museums included in Nova Scotia's museum system and the two sites of the art gallery here in Halifax and Yarmouth for the months of July and August. Nova Scotia will be welcoming Atlantic Canadians on June 23rd and Nova Scotia will be ready to welcome visitors when we move to phase three of our phase three and our borders open to the rest of the country on July 14th. We want Nova Scotians, our Atlantic Canadian neighbors and the rest of the country to plan their vacations here in Nova Scotia. We're investing an additional $3 million in tourism marketing initiatives this year and this will bring the total consumer marketing investment to 5.8 million. These campaigns designed by Tourism Nova Scotia will drive customers to tourism operators and businesses across the province. There are currently two campaigns being marketed in Nova Scotia. The first is called Shine on Tourism. It was designed to foster pride and confidence in the industry among Nova Scotians. It will also remind Nova Scotians of our role as ambassadors and to offer our world-class hospitality and help the tur tourism industry as visitors return. The Rediscover Nova Scotia campaign builds on last year's successful effort to celebrate residents who stayed close to home. The ads are designed to motivate travel and emphasize that Nova Scotians do not need to leave this province to find unique experiences and adventures. We're also pleased to announce that we launched the Atlantic Canada Do More Marketing campaign today. And it reminds Atlantic Canadians that because Nova Scotia has so much to offer, it deserves more than one trip. Future campaigns will be targeted at Canadian visitors to attract them through the summer and fall seasons. We are pleased to support the industry and encourage everyone to be ambassadors as we remind visitors about the many things that make Nova Scotia a world-class tourism destination. To close, I want to leave you with one of the videos from the Shine On campaign, and following that, I'll be happy to take questions. Thank you. What is the heart of Nova Scotia? What is it that draws people here? Some would say it's the ocean, or the seafood, maybe lobster rolls specifically. Some would say it's a lighthouse, the coastal air. But the truth is, it's people. People keep laughter in the air. They keep old traditions alive and bring new ideas to life. The people who live here, the people who come here, they are the reason our home continues to grow and thrive, all while staying true to its roots. People are resilient, welcoming, People are the heart of Nova Scotia. So when tourism shines, Nova Scotia shines. All right, we're going to move on to the question and answer portion. And so with that, we'll open the phone lines and the first question will go to uh, Jesse Thomas at Global. Well, thanks a lot. Um, that was a nice video. Um, I guess, Minister, I'm just wondering, you, you've set some dates uh, with regards to, uh, you know, the Atlantic bubble and then potentially opening, I think, July 14th to the rest of the Canada. I'm just wondering if you can tell me how much this campaign will be uh, focusing on, on Nova Scotians traveling here at home or... or how much of this campaign do you see is attracting people from other provinces and, and really uh, generating the economy, um, you know, in both regards? Yeah, the, 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 there's three campaigns that we're targeting, and one of them is actually targeting Nova Scotians to stay in Nova Scotia and visit uh, other parts of the province and discover, um, you know, great attractions that we have here. And we're also at the same time marketing to Atlantic Canadians. Um, that opening is happening in a very short term. 
and we're also rolling out our marketing across the province. Um, I believe the breakdown is uh, approximately a third um, to Nova Scotia, and then there's um, two-thirds to Atlantic Canadians and to the rest of the country for advertising dollars. Go ahead with your follow-up, Jesse. I'm just wondering if there's a way to kind of forecast and determine what the interest might be um, from people from other provinces and jurisdictions, um, you know, after July 14th to, to, to travel again, or is that part of the marketing uh, campaign strategy to, to show people it's safe? Uh, do we do we think it could be a salvage uh, summer tourist season here? Um, I don't, uh, you know, we don't anticipate that we're going to reach the levels we were at two summers ago, but we anticipate that there'll be interest uh, for individuals to travel. There's uh, we know that there's a lot of family members that want to visit each other. There's a lot of people who want to come home and visit. So, uh, you know, we know that uh, there's people who all are also looking for a vacation. Uh, most of us in this country haven't had a, a traveled outside our jurisdictions in 18 months. So there is a pent up demand there and we want to make sure that for those who are seeking to travel that uh, Nova Scotia is also on their, is front of mind with the, this advertising campaign. Next question will go to Keith Desette, Canadian Press. Good morning, Minister. Uh, just wondering about the overall figure, eighteen point two million dollars. Is that enough in your, your your estimation in terms of what the industry, the size of the industry, and and the size of the actual hit that it took, pretty much over the last eighteen to months to two years? Yeah, I mean, we recognize that our tourism industry took over a billion dollar hit. This isn't to uh, to replace all the lost revenue they had. What this is to do is uh, help them have a, a kickstart to their to their um, to attract uh, people to come and uh, stay at their at their motels, hotels, and bed and breakfasts across the province. I did speak to some tourist uh, to some accommodations owners yesterday in terms of how they felt this would um, would impact them and one of them was a large hotel in uh, in Halifax here which experienced more than 60 percent decline in room nights this year and they said um, you know they think they can leverage this quite well they were gonna actually take whatever dollars we gave them and match it and put programs together because they thought it was a great idea that you know they would actually start marketing through our website programs that aren't just hey come stay at a room but you know, they would uh, look at buying gift certificates from um, restaurants uh, that are close by. They would uh, package it with um, other uh, tourism operators. So they were looking at putting a complete package together and seeing uh, and trying to attract people. And they, they thought it would have a significant impact. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm quite comfortable that a small bed and B op Air B a small bed and breakfast operator with 10 rooms receiving $10,000 can impact their season. And a large hotel in, you know, in downtown Sydney or downtown Halifax receiving over $100,000 can have an impact on their season as well. Keith, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, I'm just wondering, when you were putting this together, was there any consideration given to uh, matching New Brunswick program, which provides uh, tax rebates to travelers? Never. Um, from day one, when I saw that program, um, I we know that... You know, many tourism operators um, had uh, sold out their room nights last summer at a reduced rate, but they still uh, were attracting uh, people to come to their facilities. And I was mostly concerned with the uh, with the hardest hit um, hotels and motels across the province. So from day one, when I was in discussion discussions with our partners, I said, I want a program that's equitable. I don't want uh, a motel with 40 rooms to not have anyone come with a voucher, um, which could happen if we were using a different model. So um, this program drives the money out and then each operator can put a package together and advertise it through our website. So we're gonna have hundreds of operators who are all um, pushing marketing dollars, pushing uh, packages. They can work together with, um, with our <coughs> With our travel agents, I, I look at this as uh, as as uh, you know streaming money uh, to many many sectors, including our restaurant industry, which is quite hard hit. The next question will go to Paul Bacon from All Nova Scotia. Uh, hello, Minister. Uh, does um, running a campaign to attract people to Nova Scotia is it complicated a little bit by 
some uncertainty about dates when people can actually travel here. Well, there's a press release going out today that um, lays more certainty to the dates of when we open up to Atlantic Canada and when we open up to the rest of Canada. Um, but, you know, I think everyone recognizes that, um, you know, although those are the anticipated dates that, you know, we never know what can happen with this disease. We need to be very careful and diligent in our day-to-day -day lives and make sure we're following public health guidelines and, you know, and keep it, keep it away. But, uh, you know, from uh, the, the press release today and our, our communications around the phase one um, all the way through with the reopenings, have the targeted dates. Atlanta, Canada is coming on June 23rd, rest of Canada on July 14th. Paul, do you have a follow-up? Uh, we have known for some time that there was a tourism campaign in the works. Uh, is this, is what you talked about today, is it, is that that campaign or part of that campaign? Yeah, that was, um, that was a tourism part in terms of the advertising, which I spoke to today, which were uh, it's 5.8 million of which 3 million is new money going into the program. Um, but there's also a lot more enhancements in this on how can we get people traveling through the province? How can we get them staying in our um, accommodations uh, sector? And how can we get, um, you know, uh, more spend happening to our restaurants and other tourism operators throughout the province? So that's what, uh, you know, when we targeted the accommodation sector, as people move throughout the province, the, uh, the spin-off will be for restaurants, for tourism operators, and part of that is also for the attraction is for us opening up our museums so that people have more of an incentive to travel as well. So the next question goes to Jean Laroche from CBC. Hi, Minister. Um, I don't want to be that guy, but according to Tyans, uh, the the sector lost $1.7 billion uh, compared to uh, 2019. So it was uh, more than a billion. It was uh, closer to $2 billion. And I wondered um, what the government's goal is in providing this 12.5 to these tourism operators. Well, like I mentioned before, to, uh, to a small bed and breakfast, it's $10,000 that they can use for putting packages together for advertising. To a larger hotel, that would be in downtown Halifax. The largest hotel is approximately 280 rooms, I believe. It'd be $140,000 for them to advertise and put packages together. Um, the industry, no, they're not looking, the industry's not looking for government to make them whole. They're looking to government to help them um, spark the people traveling and staying in hotels again. And that's what we're doing with today's uh, announcements. There's multiple facets to this. The museum reopening is to entice people to move around the province and, you know, and uh, visit our wonderful museums. We have the advertising that's happening um, with new money to provide more advertising and get people coming here. And then as well, opening up our, our portal to our um, tourism operators to make sure that they're using all the tools available to them to market their attractions and their accommodations to Nova Scotians, Atlanta Canadians, and right across the country. Go ahead with your follow-up, Sean. All right. Um, you said that there would be a thousand operators that take advantage of this uh, grant. Another 400 of the uh, of those, I'm assuming, would uh, get the restart uh, money. Um, is that how many operators are there in the province, and what what percentage of that are is that uh, of those who are in the business? Um, well, the criteria for this is you need to have rooms that you're renting out, and you you need to be registered for HST. That's it. So it doesn't matter on your revenue, your decline in room nights. This is open and a you know where I was trying to level the playing field for all operators so they could all entice people to travel. And as long as they're registered with an HST number and they have rooms that they rent out, then, uh, then they will receive the grant of $1,000 per room up to 10 rooms and $500 a room from 11 after. The next question goes to Adrian Blanc from Radio Canada. Thank you, Minister. We hear that hotels particularly have a hard time hiring people and uh, be ready to reopen. So why 
does this uh, tourism restart plan mainly focus on marketing only? Well, the in my discussions with the tourism operators, this is what they wanted. The two things they, the biggest thing they wanted was certainty around the dates. Um, one tourism tourism operator said that if our dates are not locked down um, and they're ambiguous, people will just wait until they have certainty. Because even saying, um, you know, e even having a little bit of wiggle room on your date, um, they the feedback we received was that individuals will not book their travel plans. So the number one ask that I had from uh, tourism operators to get everything going and to get bookings happening was have a date. And the number two part was how do we attract tourists here and how do we get people moving? And in our discussions with them, you know, this was, um, this was what the industry communicated to us that, um, that would have a significant impact for them is advertising dollars, helping them um, fund packages to put together and we saw that as being positive because it would uh, push money into other businesses and other sectors that were, were that were hard hit by the pandemic as well. Adrian, do you have a follow-up question? Yes. Um, how will your ministry make sure that the money is spent for marketing purposes? The um, you know I, I'm taking their I, I'm roll we're going to roll the money out up front. Um, we do have a mechanism in place that we can um, ask for verification and we can uh, do it on, uh, you know, just uh, randomly for a few of the uh, operators. But I know with what they've been through, they are already planning on um, significant investment in marketing. Um, you know, they're trying to get out of the pandemic. So I don't feel that, uh, that, it's, uh, that they're going to have too much trouble taking this money and finding uh, advertising to do, uh, marketing to do, putting packages together, I think, uh, I think they'll be very keen to do that. And I have uh, trust that uh, as they apply for it, you know, the parameters are set out in terms of what they can spend the money on. And we're putting, the, uh, we're putting our faith in them as we've done for many years. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of faith and trust in the uh, sector and in, and in Nova Scotians as well. Uh, the next question will go to Pat Healy from Laker News. Hi. Um, there, it seems like this has taken some time to come together. So what was the, the process in putting this package together for the tourism operators? Well, we've been having ongoing discussions. Um, and, you know, we this started um, months ago in terms of having discussions around uh, you know, how would we restart our, our um, tourism sector after, um, after more vaccines were rolled out, after we were opening up uh, more to the rest of Canada. And, uh, you know, so it did take time. And we also wanted to make sure that uh, many people felt that their voices were being heard because we didn't want to provide a solution. Um, you know, our operators know what's best for their industry. So, you know, they were communicating to us. Um, a big part of the communications I was hearing was, um, if you do a voucher program, I won't get one person visit my um, motel with a voucher. So, you know, it won't do anything for me. And I heard that from many, many operators. Um, you know, I also heard from some other operators that were smaller that they felt the bigger operators might, um, you know, if it was an application-based program, might draw most of the money and um, you know, and so one of the things that was asked was don't have a cap on it. So in terms of uh, as the uh, conversations were unfolding, um, there was a recurring theme and that was if we push the money out to the operators, they would put it to use um, in a manner that best fits their operations and uh, what their challenges are. So that's, uh, that's, that was where we landed with their help. Pat, do you have a follow-up question? Yes, I do. In my area that I cover, East Hand, there's several tourism attractions. How does this money help them? Well, any operator there can partner with those attra with those attractions and put a package together. Come spend a night, and you'll have passes to um, this attraction or that attraction. Um, you know, you can they can a uh, hotel operator there could um, partner up with three, four different attractions and. And, you know, somebody, uh, you know, when you book your room, you could pick what attraction you want. 
Um, they could offer in their room nights one attraction, two attractions. They could offer, um, you know, a gift card to a local restaurant or a gift certificate. There's many ways that they can uh, put the packages together. If I'm a tourism, um, if I offer tours, I'm reaching out to my accommodations right now and seeing if I can help them put a package together and, um, you know, pre-sell um, my my tours to that accommodations uh, provider and make sure that they're um, that they're providing those uh, those uh, those tickets to anyone who's coming and staying at their accommodations. The next question goes to Lois Ann Dort at uh, the Guysboro Journal. Hello, good morning. Um, I have a question from a, um, a tourism operator in Guysboro County. Um, the, the accommodations were excluded from the provincial small business impact grants um, since they were not ordered shut. Uh, will that decision be revisited? Um, so the there was a the past programs are there's no changes to those today. Um, that small business that uh, had individuals that could uh, that could stay there, uh, depending on the rooms they have, they will receive one thousand dollars per room up to ten rooms, and then five hundred dollars from that point on. Um, but the there was a couple different programs we had. One of them was a tax incentive. And that was applying towards commercial um, property taxes, which are quadruple what residential. So if it was an accommodations um, that uh, provided accommodations out of their home and paid residential property taxes, they were not eligible for that past program and the eligibility requirements remain the same. And we're almost at time. So the last question will go to um, Lois Sand with our follow up. Okay, thank you. Um, the other question that I had was there's a, a, a large increase in non-licensed short-term rentals such as Airbnbs, which is putting a lot of pressure on smaller inns um, with, and smaller uh, licensed B&Bs. What is the government planning to do to, um, to override that impact? Um, so in terms of, you know, we're working on uh, registration with the Airbnbs, um, but, you know, government, uh, you know, we can't tell someone what they can do with their cottage or with their house in terms of if they want to offer a short-term rental or not. Um, what we have seen, though, over the last year is with, uh, with less tourists coming to the province, we've seen a lot of Airbnb uh, rentals turning into longer-term uh, rentals and turning, in, turning back into... Um, apartments with uh, long-term leases on them. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our event for today.